Did you know only 51% of children with a mental health problem in the U.S. receive mental health treatment? 58% receive their support at school. West 40's climate and culture coaches can help West Cook educators recognize the signs of trauma and address the needs of students to ensure academic success. Funds for Illinois' REACH initiative are available to help your district support this work. Contact us at selhub at west40.org to learn more. That's selhub at west40.org. You're listening to Shift Everything, a podcast by West 40, where we challenge the status quo in education. I'm your host, Chris Coffey. You know, for me growing up, we had a teacher, a chalkboard, an occasional film or a movie and computer class ever so often. But all these years later, things have really changed. A growing number of teachers these days are getting pretty innovative in the learning experience for their students. And many are using technology to do that. And today I have two people to tell us about innovation in the classroom, about all the cool things technology could allow educators and teachers and paraprofessionals to do. I'm talking about uh, the innovation team at West 40. That's Angela Gonzalez and Justin Gonzalez. And Angela and Justin, thank you very much for joining us on Shift Everything to talk about this important topic that can really make a difference in the classroom. So Angela, I I'll guess I'll, I'll start off with you. What does it mean to be innovative in the classroom and how can that improve the overall learning experience for kids? I think innovation, we oftentimes tie innovation to tech, which now in uh, 2023 makes a lot of sense. But I think being innovative is really just a mindset, creating opportunities for students and for teachers to think differently about what they're doing, to be critical consumers of the content that they're receiving, and to use that information to genuinely think about their learning in a different way. Angela and Justin, could you talk a little bit about your backgrounds with teaching? H have you been in the classroom? Do you know this from both sides? Yeah. So I'm coming from an elementary school. Uh, I'm new to West 40. So I am Justin Gonzalez. I'm an innovation specialist here, just started in July. Um, but I'm coming from the background in an elementary school building. The past four years, I was an admin, an assistant principal uh, within an Apple Distinguished School. And so we really saw the transformation of learning and what that could, what the possibilities could be within that school setting. Prior to that, I was an instructional coach actually with Angela. Um, so we were working on a team before together and really just pushing that, that innovative thinking and that, that idea, that mindset that Angela talked about, the mindset shift for educators and for them to be able to just give their students opportunities for creativity and creation. Prior to that, we were in the classroom. You know, I was in the classroom. I was a fifth grade teacher before that third grade. So definitely was able to take those risks in the classroom to give those students those opportunities. Learning could be boring, right? Every day to day could be very, you know, the same thing. So given these opportunities for some innovative practices that you could incorporate into your lessons, into your classroom, definitely gives those students those opportunities to keep it engaging, keep them engaged with the learning and give them as much opportunities as possible in the classroom. Angela, you were a teacher as well. Could you talk about when you started to realize being innovative could lead to better results? Yeah, I think I, I realized that without being told it right away, I was in a co-taught classroom my first year as an educator and just the varying needs within that one classroom of 28 was so grand that the only way that I could meet the needs of all of my diverse learners in that space was through the use of technology. And being able to meet their needs with fidelity was what was really critical and important to me. Being able to provide opportunities for them to access grade level content in a way that was appropriate for each individual learner in my room is what the catalyst was for me to really dive into innovative teaching and learning and exploring how that can be amplified or replicated in any grade level, any content area, any space. So that was, I would say, 
differentiating for my diverse students needs was was my catalyst. Could either of you give a example of an innovative teaching method? What is it? How does it work? Does it use technology? I don't necessarily know if there's a method or a one prescribed way. I think an innovative teacher is someone who provides opportunity for students to engage in learning in a way that allows them to see the real world, allows them to communicate and create and collaborate those three C's, all those buzzwords that are, are flying all over the place now, but allows for those opportunities to exist, allows them to organically understand what it's like to work on a team, but also most importantly, that they have high levels of critical thinking within all of their, their learning spaces. I think that's what an innovative practice looks like is having those critical pedagogical components in place. And then whatever vessel we use to make those opportunities come to life, we can decide once those practices are in place. Yeah. And I think another thing to consider is all of our students are different and all of them have different learning styles. And so with that in mind, what opportunities are you giving them so that they can show how they're learning, right? If we, if we tell students to all write a paper, right? That might be some student's avenue to express themselves. Others might be more creative or might want to explore that in a different way to show the same understanding of the standard or concept that you're trying to teach them. So trying to give, again, that the idea that every student's a different, every student and honestly, any, every human is different and they learn different ways. So really, how are we providing that opportunity for them to showcase what they're learning in a way that is unique to them? Is this something that you learn when you're in college uh, training to become a teacher, or is this something that you develop through professional learning, through your own research once you're in the school? That's a good question. Well, I, I genuinely, not even from an innovative standpoint, but just from an educator standpoint, I don't think you know anything until you're in the field. Um, they, I don't know that there's enough that anyone could prepare you for. But in terms of innovative practices. I think we all learn and we all know that students learn best when they are engaged in a real world task, when they are invested in what they're doing, when they're able to collaborate with like-minded individuals. We all know these things, but because of the requirements that are the huge, heavy requirements that are placed on teachers, day in and day out, oftentimes we don't out of, for whatever reason, not to blame or shame, but oftentimes it's easier for us to not create these opportunities because of the tasks at hand that we need to get done. And what we like to try and do is think about all the tasks at hand that we need to get done and ways that we can embed or overlay these innovative practices in what is required and what needs to be done. It sounds like it's pretty exciting, and West 40 has created this new team specific to innovation in the classroom. Could you describe what your roles are now, and when you're walking through a school, what are you looking for? So I think um, in terms of our role, uh, we're really what you want us to be. Um, you know, we are going to show up for you and we are going to kind of push you in a way to your better self and to incorporate some of those innovative practices. Um, some of the things that Angela and I have done in the past is learning labs, learning walks, right? Trying to get yourself out of your every day and trying to explore what are other teachers doing right down the hall from you, right? What are some opportunities within your own district that we can learn and grow from one another? Because even something like that doesn't happen organically. And so sometimes we need that extra little push to invite someone into our room to learn from one another. Um, you know, that could then, you know, spiral and kind of branch out to learning labs where we're recording ourselves and providing feedback to one another on our practices. And so those are just some of the some of the small offerings that we could potentially start with the district, um, but the options are, you know, the opportunities are endless and what we can do. A lot of our support we've looked at from a three-pronged approach. Is the support directly in the classroom with teachers and student facing? Is the support that we provide to instructional coaches throughout the district or is the support 
to the administrators or district stakeholders, because we know that an innovative culture can only exist when all stakeholders throughout a school district are invested in the future of learning, in transforming what teaching and learning can look like. So we really like to offer three different types of approaches for those, what we see as three really big stakeholder groups. Angela, in recent years, you've worked with a West Cook County school district in particular that's really um, taken the lead to kind of set the standard. Uh, you've been a part of that process. Could you talk about this school district and uh, I guess where they are now? Sure. Well, um, Justin and I both come from Berwyn South School District 100, and that's where this idea, this concept of LEAD was born, which is basically an educational cohort that believes or is, is a, comprised of educators that believe in the power of technology to transform teaching and learning. And the why of this cohort really came from all eight of those schools in Berwyn South District 100 applying for Apple Distinguished School status and us going through a, an extensive process and receiving feedback that innovation was happening in silos throughout the district. And I think that's pretty consistent from district to district in West 40, but also from classroom to classroom in different buildings. And the hope was or is and continues to be that as we create these cohorts of educators who believe in the power of tech to transform teaching and learning, that their light spreads throughout the district, that their practices, their knowledge, their talents can be shared throughout the district in an organic way. And now in 2023, so LEAD started in 2019 and we're in 2023, we're in our fourth year of implementation. Um, all eight schools in Berwyn South, not just because of LEAD, but because of all of their tremendous efforts, they really are genuinely building a culture of innovation in their district. They are working to make sure that all stakeholders are invested in this type of learning. And because of that, all eight schools now have received Apple Distinguished Status. So it's really exciting. We're continuing our work with them uh, to engage in a third cohort of educators. And we'll also be engaging in learning labs, which Justin alluded to, where we're really focus on innovative practices in an intensive six to eight week cycle. So yeah, it's, it's a lot of exciting stuff. Justin, there may be some people and teachers who know that they have to use the computer or the iPad, but they might not know everything that those devices have to offer the power behind them. Are people missing out if they don't use that? I would say yes and no, right? Like Angela said, it's not all about the device. It's about that, the mindset that you could have. Um, there's a lot of teachers that I've worked with in the past that are a little bit nervous with technology. And what I would say to them is like, we'll lean on the experts in the room. And sometimes those experts in the room are those students, right? They are growing up with this technology. They're not afraid to make those mistakes. And so that's what I would say to them, you know, to encourage them to reach out to those, those people. And sometimes they are the students in the room that might be those experts. Um, but there's also people in the district, right? Instructional coaches, um, tech coaches, things like that, that can help and support them. But also, it's okay to make mistakes. I mean, unless you're going to snap something in half, right? There's no breaking something to that extent where you can't undo and, and get it back to where it should be. Um, so take risks and, and try. And, and that's like the best I can say right, right now. So hands-on education, getting a chance to interact with something as a team, as a class, using technology in some cases, does that have a bigger impact on a young learner's mind rather than an adult talking to them, telling them something in a lecture format? Well, there's a lot of research right now that I think is being done. Erickson Institute is one that comes to mind for early learners with their, how they engage with technology um, and the impact that that has on them long-term. So I don't know that I can really speak to the research and the impact, but what I can speak to and know for certain is that technology is not going anywhere. And if we don't teach students how to engage with these devices and be, like I said, critical consumers and critical thinkers about what they're learning, 
then we are doing a disservice to them because this isn't going anywhere. It's only going to grow and expand and, and we're going to need jobs that aren't even invented yet. We're going to be needing these students to do those jobs. And so if we're not teaching them the skills of how to be critical consumers, not necessarily how to use the device because we're far past that. We just went through a, a three year still in pandemic where preschoolers had to access school through Zoom. So just knowing how to use a device is, is simply not enough anymore. And as educators, we need to teach students the skills to be problem solvers, critical thinkers in this really changing tech world. And Angela and Justin, to quote, uh, I guess, the tagline of, of one of your marketing materials, how do we empower educators today to prepare students to thrive tomorrow? It seems like this is a big step in that direction. That's the hope. That's the hope. And I have seen it come to life. I think we need to, we really had an opportunity with the pandemic where, like I said, every single student in the world, pre-K through adult learners, had to be on a device and knows how to use a device. So if we're just using some of these most powerful creation devices as simply a substitute for a worksheet or a substitute for a folder or a notebook, we're not doing the device justice, but we're also not doing our students any justice either. We have this opportunity to lean into this, albeit really hard past three years, but we can use this as a catalyst to move forward for how we really redefine what learning looks like instead of just substituting tech for another tool that we had in the past. And that's what we're hoping to do is help all of our districts in West 40 redefine what learning can look like in their buildings. And Justin, how unique is your team? Are there other innovation type teams in other states or are, is this the start of something new? I, I don't know of any other places that have innovation coordinators or specialists. Whenever I'm talking to people and share my title and what I do, they're like, why doesn't that happen everywhere, right? And so thinking about that as, an, as a new opportunity to support others and to get people to have that mind shift change uh, is definitely something that I think is new or at least newer and that might be coming. But I think that is definitely something that we're happy to support. And Angela and Justin, we'll wrap it up. What is the best way for a teacher or a school district here in the Chicago area to reach out to you if they're interested in learning more about this? Yeah. So super simple, low hanging fruit is just heading to our website. That's west40.org. Uh, all of our information can be found on there, but you could also just shoot us an email at innovation at west40.org and we can connect with you that way. We're happy to set up a meeting, come see you in person, do a case study. Really excited and eager, like we said, to help transform and redefine what teaching and learning looks like across West 40. Well, Angela Gonzalez and Justin Gonzalez of the West 40 Innovation Team, thank you very much for joining Shift Everything to talk about innovation and education. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks for listening to Shift Everything. We want to hear your thoughts and bold ideas and share your educational accomplishments. To join the conversation, email us at shifteverything at west40.org.